my creatives and welcome to another video so today i'm here to share how i create this altered book art journal and i'm going to create this first page so this is a book uh, with uh, sewn in signatures as i showed you and that means that you have to rip out your pages at the thread if you do not do that um this is a spread so it will um how do i say that its companion <laughs> will get loose as well. If your book is glued in, it doesn't matter where you tear, uh, but with these signatures, you have to be mindful of that. And what I do is I go through my book and every middle of the signature, I take out four pages, which is two spreads at first. And then I will check if my book is thinned out enough because I'm going to add a lot of uh, media into this book and I need it to, uh, to be able to grow. Uh, so that is why I'm checking uh, if it is uh, thinned out enough. And at certain places I will tear out uh, some more. I think I take out at least half the book. Uh, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, but this is something I do on a gut feeling. Um, it also depends on how thick your pages are. How big is your book? Uh, how many is there? inside your book so it really depends but for me um, this is how I did it for this book and uh, as you can see I took out quite a lot of pages from this book what I'm doing next is I am going to glue this first page to the um, end paper because you know this is such a weird page you can't do anything with it it's already halfly glued on to that end paper so i decided I, i'm going to glue it to that um completely uh, i will also do that with the last page of uh, of the book then next up because i'm going to create an art journal i'm also going to secure the binding at certain places so where you can see the binding mainly in the front and the back of this book i'm going to add a little bit of masking tape um, so to prevent it from falling up part but also to prevent some paint seeping through because uh, you could see the binding uh, just making sure i do that and that's how i do it and then i'm going to um, stick two pages together because i'm going to use this as an art journal i'm going to add media inside this uh, so i want these pages to be a little bit thicker uh, i am using a gesso for that that is something that i do already for years when i work in an altered book art journal i use gesso to stick down my pages first of all it is very cheap to use gesso instead of glue and second of all i find that i can create a more even coat with uh, gesso than with uh, glue i like that my pages how my pages feel after i use uh, gesso so i tend to do this with gesso they stick beautifully together and what i'm doing make sure that they line up perfectly by closing uh, the book so these pages don't have a you know weird edge because you ripped pages out uh, in between so i don't care if there's any gesso anywhere because i'm going to create this into an altered book i also love the look of gesso on book pages so that is very very good and here i flip you through it and i have st stuck down um, two pages together now it is time to create my first page into this altered book journal and I'm using a card to add some gesso to my page. I like to use cards because you can create a fun texture. Also, I don't like to clean my brushes, so sometimes I'm just too lazy to take a brush and I take a card to put some gesso on my page. Uh, I'm going to create one page, so this will not be a double spread. Um, I think art journals don't have rules, so if you want to create only double page spreads, you can. But if you want to only do one page, you can also do that. Uh, you can do whatever you want, it's your art journal. Uh, so I only wanted to do one page, so I'm going to do this one page. And I'm using a spatula and some acrylic paint to create these... I don't know... <laughs> Uh, how do you call this shape? I don't know. They look like triangles, but they're not triangles. I just wanted to create this texture with these two opposite colors. Uh, very, very bright and fun, uh, fun page. 
Uh, I'm taking a stamp to create a little bit more textured and this is with watering can which is a grey ink. Uh, I thought black would be just too harsh and too heavy. That's why I often you like to use uh, grey ink and that's also in this case. And now I'm taking some scraps for my scrap bin and some sewing paper uh, that I have recently bought in one of my thrift thrift store uh, adventures uh, and I'm going to take a strip of this to create a collage on the side. I love to mix modern things with vintage things. I think, I don't know, it makes me so happy. Uh, I mean, you have that neon pink and that very, very bright, tur bright turquoise blue with these beautiful vintage papers uh, and some brown packaging paper. I really enjoy the contrast uh, and it makes me very happy. So that is what I wanted to do with this page. I wanted to create this neutral collage on top of a very bright and, uh, you know, fun background. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the top-down gluing method. So I glue down the top piece first so it can stick <laughs> to all the other pieces. So my collage will uh, approximately be the same as I planned it out. And then I stick down uh, the whole piece onto my page. Then I was missing something. So I went into my stamp stash and I looked for neutral colored stamps. So I'm looking for some browns and I'm going to add them to in three places to make this collage look a little bit more interesting. So I didn't want them to be focal points. I wanted to, uh, them to be in between layers. And I think stamps can be a very good focal point, but also very good in between layer, also a very good background. Uh, so stamps are definitely a favorite in my uh, craft room. And now I wanted to add some drawing with this Indian ink. And I am using a paintbrush and dipping it straightly into the ink. And I'm just going for it. Freehanding this leafy thing. I think you can never go wrong with leaves like this. I mean, it's a stem with loops. I believe everyone can make this. And I very much love the look of this. And I enjoy creating leaf illustrations in my art. And especially with this dramatic effect. Made me super happy. I'm adding some water to a paint palette uh, and dipping my brush in it to water it down so I could splatter with it uh, because there's still a lot of ink on my brush and uh, I'm also using it to um, add the excess onto a book page that is something that I am very much enjoying uh, lately I have seen Barbara from 49 Dragonflies do that and Louisa Heinzel as well to create a collage for their with their book pages uh, when they are creating another project um, I thought it was brilliant and I started doing that and I'm very happy I did so. So I don't, um, you know, don't waste any product. And I have very nice collage pieces once I want to collage. Now, I thought my plant was still a little bit blah in the background. So I decided to take a white Posca paint marker and do these scribbly doodly lines all around it. But also on the inside of the lines. So these black lines are bordered by this scribbly white. I think it gives a lot more depth and it also, you know, adds to the artsy, artsy feel. Uh, I very much enjoy doing that. After that, I thought, well, now I also need a little bit of white splattering. <laughs> so I'm taking a little bit of gesso and adding water. And I'm going to splatter that on my page. As you can see, I try to center it on three places of my page that make a visual triangle. And uh, of course, I'm drawing in between every layer. Now I was looking for a focal point and I found this beautiful butterfly in my stash. But I just couldn't make it work. It just didn't go. It was not the page for this butterfly. So I'm taking some more of these uh, strips that are in my scrap box. Uh, I also have uh, this strip with some sewing on it because I tested out one of the stitches of my new sewing machine. I keep them because they are great uh, collage pieces. Uh, I have to create some new ones, I have to say, but they are wonderful. And you just use old book pages, strips of old book pages or any other scrap scrap paper to create them when i create these i'm uh, looking at color variation as you can see i have the, the brown packaging paper the cream colored um, music sheet paper and then the white with the black thread 
it didn't go. So I went back into my stash and then I found this cat. I believe Ellie sent this to me a long, long time ago. And I've hoarded her stamps, these stamps, also this bird from Tim Holtz, for so long. But now this was the perfect page. This was the perfect page <laughs> for this very strange bird and this cat. And I uh, created this little story in my mind about... Uh, this bird and this cat so this bird is a little bit you know loopy he's a little bit crazy and this cat is sitting there judging him <laughs> as cats do <laughs> you know your cat does judge you right mine do <laughs> um and he's looking up a little bit annoyed um you know face palming <laughs> at that bird that is acting up uh, like crazy so i went into the snarky sticker book and i found this sentence that says who left the bag of idiots open and i thought yes this is perfect i also feel like this sometimes to be honest that i i you know you go somewhere and you think who left the bag of idiots open so i thought it was a very good uh <laughs> sentence for this page and i had so much fun creating this i really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did i would love it if you would give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe i also have a patreon you can check out link is down below thank you so much for watching and until next time bye